Now, whoever does write that history must not overstate the case. Compared with the Anglo-American, not the corporation, but metropolitan capital, compared with the United States, British, and European abandonment of Marxism, summed up in the 1990 Socialist Register title, The Retreat of the Intellectuals. What has taken place in South Africa was a nervous shuffle rather than a stampede. But it did strain the links between Marxist theorizing and working class politics. In September 1991, that connection is more tentative and less assured than it was in, say, 1985. And what of the future? Let me be absolutely clear. I think it's, it's a very important point to end with. The unity of theory and practice, a desired um, conjoining of theory and practice, is not achieved merely by a recognition that it's desirable. It doesn't happen because intellectuals read Lenin, slap their foreheads, and rush off to address a mass meeting. It is a political and historical possibility yielded up by specific conditions. And in a kind of uh, brusque shorthand, it requires that unity, following Anderson's argument, requires that major sectors of the working class, because of their shared circumstances and their social experience, are consciously hostile to capitalism that they do not believe that their most basic interests can be met within existing social relations. It requires, too, that there is an intelligentsia that supports working class aspirations. And it requires a political vehicle through which intellectuals can reach workers, and every bit is important, through which workers can reach intellectuals. To say that these conditions cannot simply be wished into existence is not to say that they are merely or only or solely a product of impersonal historical forces, that we should all commit a kind of Menshevism on a large scale waiting for things to reach a certain rightness. Those conditions are not there irrespective of struggle or of politics. For Marxists, the challenge, surely, is to assess to what extent those conditions are present or are potentially present by using the critical and self-critical methods of social analysis that are central to a Marxist approach, and then, secondly, no, and then simultaneously to Italy in ways derived from that analysis. To put that more formally, Marxism involves a search for subjective agencies capable of effective strategies for the dislodgement of objective structures. To put it less formally, to put it much more directly, I'm going to quote from Gramsci. I was going to end this talk by citing Gramsci's pessimism of the intellect, optimism of the will, or the, the phrase that he borrowed from Roland and, and made so distinctively his own. And I was going to em embroider upon that and talk about its particular, I think, resonance for those of us on the left in South Africa at the moment. But when I went back to the prison notebooks and looked for some of the times when Gramsci used that phrase, I came across this sentence used immediately before that well-known maxim. Gramsci wrote, It is necessary to direct one's attention violently towards the present as it is if one wishes to transform it. <laughs>